Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Um, I was inspired by a vintage watercolor greeting card that I found a few months ago, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna try to do something that's fun. Um, I like those greeting cards that look like children painted them, and it's just a lot of color on them. Um, you can use thick paint, or you can water down your paint so it looks like water paint. Um, I will be using Deco Art Acrylic today, and uh, in the premium line, I will be using the um, Deco Art Traditions brushes, as always, wonderful brushes, okay? So, what I'd like to do first is um, just have you see my painting, okay? I spritzed it at the end with the um, Deco Media Shimmer Mister, okay? And this one is yellow, just regular yellow. I put a little bit too much on there, so I want to show you what not to do later on. So um, stick around and I'll show you what not to do, all right? So this, I did put a little bit too much yellow and then I varnished it too quickly, so I will explain that to you later. So um, first, what I want to do is I want to get some gesso on. Now my gesso, I didn't tighten Tighten it up well enough so it dried a little, but that doesn't mean you can't use it, all right? I put out a big glob of the white. I'm going to mix it with a little water just to get my background going, and then I'm just going to jump right into it. And again, this is, um, I didn't worry about perspective for this, just a fun kind of painting to look like a, an old vintage reading card, all right? So here we go. I'm going to be first using a big brush. Now this is a number one flat brush, all right? And I did dip it in the water just to get it a little wet and on my palette I have a variety of paints which we're going to run along the bottom for you all right and first I'm just dipping into the gesso now it's pretty thick that gesso so I'm just gonna dip in the water and mix it a little bit so the first thing I'm going to do is just paint this gesso all over now it's hard you'll have a problem seeing it of course because it's going to be white on top of a white canvas now see it's a little dry but that's okay I could just pluck that up and lay it right down there on my palette paper here we go, back in a little bit of water, just mixing it up, okay? So I just wanna put this nice coating on, make my paint kinda smooth on there a little better. And I will just keep painting this. So one thing about gesso, it has hundreds of uses, of course. You can use it under your, your fine oil paintings as a layer, all right? And that always helps. You can sand between the layers for a smoother coat, and that's what I do when I do oil painting. Acrylic painting, you can use it as regular um, acrylic, just as your white, okay? And you can water it down however consistency you need, okay? So let me get a little more white on there, and then I'm just gonna show you how to make a little bit of a muddled background, um, just to get a little bit of color on here so we can start. See how quick that was? Now I am going in a back and forth motion like an X because I wanna fill in the tooth of the canvas. This canvas is a medium grain red label Frederick's canvas, a very, very nice canvas. I just wanted it a little bit smoother today and that's why I'm putting on this extra coat. Now, while this paint is wet, I'm going into a little bit of an avocado color. Now, this is not the premium line. This one is the regular DecoArt Americana acrylic paint, okay? It's called Light Avocado. So, I wanna get a little bit of a flip-flop color in here. All right, now I'm not going to blend it all in. I just wanna get a little bit of an illusion in the background. This is an abstract painting. Nothing has to be perfect, again, don't have to worry about perspective or anything in this type of painting. I like the idea that it almost looks like a child did it, and that's what makes it fun and whimsical. So you can pick whatever colors you like. I just want to show you the process of how I started this and completed it, and my little boo-boo at the end and what not to do if you don't like that kind of a look. So. I have a friend, Mike, in Monroe, and he said, oh, I don't like that yellow. So some people will like that yellow and some won't. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. I have a little bit of a, just an abstract background right now, okay? And I think it looks pretty. That light avocado is a very, very pretty color to use in, in any um, painting that you need greenery. So just gonna put my brush in the water here and rub it along the bottom on the grating. We don't want that paint to dry into the ferrule, okay, of the brush. You can see the paint in here. That means we have to rub that out a little better. All right, I'll get a paper towel and just pat it a little bit. If I still see a lot of paint in there, I can go back and push a little harder. 
and that will get that paint right out of the ferrule and then we know our paint brushes will last a long time. You don't want any paint drying in there. All right, so I'll put that down for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take a little angle brush because the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna kinda draw on those little, little vases and jars. Um, like I said, not going to worry if it's not straight. We just want a little abstract fun today. And I'm going into a gray, a nice gray color, and just loading up the brush. I have an angle brush, doesn't necessarily have to be an angle brush. And I think I'll start on this side. So it's gonna be a little hard for me to see from an angle, so every once in a while I may have to pop in front of it for a second. And just looking at the height, just gonna come across right here. Now, what I like is since that paint is still wet, okay, it's not making such a dark line. It's going to be dark light, dark light. And that's what we want, because we kind of want to give an illusion of glass, all right? So here we go, I'm just kind of making lines straight down like that. And then I can just curve it out like this. Now, like I said, not worried about perspective. If it's not straight, it's not straight. If it's not even, it's not even. Can't help it. Now, one thing you can do, of course, at home, is you can take your time, all right? So, I'm just gonna look over here, and I could see it's crooked. Whatever, I'm gonna leave it for now. Just gonna come across here, okay? Just put a little lining in here like this, all right? Now, what you can do, if you really, really wanna work on it more, you can come in here, and you can still fix it up, all right? So, if you really do want it to be straighter, you can do that. You can come in and fix it up. The paint underneath is still wet, so you can still move everything around. I'm just gonna leave that one the way it is. And you can look around your house. You can see what kind of shape bottles and all you have. And there you can have an idea. I just kind of did two the same and one different. Notice also that each one is a different height. We wanna have some contrast in there. So I'm gonna come up here a little higher and I'll just have a little top of this one, all right? And I made it a little square, because that's just easier to do right now in this angle and with this type of brush. And then I'm just gonna bring this out like this. All right, so different, but the same. There we go. Like I said, I'm not worried if it doesn't fill in. All right, just the idea, let's get these little bottles on there and have some fun with this. Now over here, I'll make a little bit of a smaller one, kind of the same shape as that. Once you start doing round edges, uh, it gets a little harder, all right? So I'm just doing kind of square ones today. See, because I could kind of do a little round one like this. It's just it is much, much harder to get it straight and, and even. And like I said, I want it a little bit straight and even, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, not worried about perspective right now. Just want to get on a couple little bottles. There we go. Okay, so I have three little bottles. The reason I'm not doing two or four is because when we're doing a project like this, it's always better to use an odd number of objects. Uh, reason being, if we have even numbers, the viewer's eye seems to group them together, and we don't want a grouping. We don't want them just to look at one section. We want to look everybody to look at the whole painting. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna go still into my gray. I'm gonna dip it in a little water because today I'm actually going to use this paint a little bit like watercolor. You don't necessarily have to always run out and buy different mediums. Acrylic is great to water down and these premiums water down very nicely. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna come in and pull down some gray color, okay? So all I'm doing is I have a liquidy paint and just putting in here and there, no rhyme or reason to it, just the idea. We wanna kinda put an illusion of glass. Okay, so you can see I'm not really um, doing it in any particular order. I'm just looking back at my other one just to get an idea of what I was doing. Doing a little crisscross here. Okay, I can come up here. All right, so that's all I'm doing to start. You can see just by putting a little gray on top of that with the background coming through, it already starts to look like a little bit of glass. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other two. Now this one, maybe I'd like to have an illusion that there's some liquid in it. So I can come across this way and maybe pull down a little. And that'll make it look like there's some, you know, maybe some colored water in it. People a lot of times put colored waters different colored waters in their vases and all, just for fun, okay? That's a little gray there, okay? Already, I have an illusion that there's some water in the, uh, 
it could be a bottle or a vase, either way. Kind of looks like a bottle, doesn't it? So I'll do the same thing over here. Just pulling some across here and there. And I am doing it very lightly, okay? My paint is thin, and you can probably see I'm barely touching just to get that, that little illusion. I don't want to put too, too much on my original painting, which was my practice. I, I did get a little crazy there, and I did put a little bit too much paint, all right? So you can see it does kind of look like glass already. So that being said, let me just get a little bit more in here, make sure we have just a little, and up here, and up here. Now, the uh, bottom, um, my bottom layer down here is already starting to dry, and that's fine. I got that first color on with the gray while it was still wet, and I think that helps, okay? There we go. Now I'm just going to rub this brush out. I'm going to go, and I'm going to put a little bit of color now into each, into each object. So my first one on the right, I had a little bit of magenta. So again, I'm making it a watery magenta. I don't want the paint real, real thick. So let me just show you. I'm going to hold up my palette for a second. You can see I'm using it like a water paint. All right. And I'm just kind of moving it around. Um, you can get away with very little paint. I have too much paint on here for this painting. I could probably could do three of them. Um, so just to let you know, squeeze your paint out sparingly. All right. And I'm going to come now and put a little pink on here. Let's start getting some color in here. All right. So I'm looking where my gray is, and that's okay. I'm going over some of the gray. The pink may pick up some of the gray, and that's fine, too. That maybe is a little dark. See what happened? I just kind of ran the brush right through it again. I like the idea of having it a little more pastel. As I look back at my, um, my practice painting, I see that it kind of looks a little bit too dark. So when you do a little quick practice painting like I did, and I didn't use um, this nice of a canvas from Fredericks uh, just to practice, okay? Then when you do your regular painting, your next painting, then you change it, then you'll like it much better, all right? So it's always a good idea. I don't always do a practice. Sometimes I do jump right in. But this time I said, let me just do a little practice. I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. So here we go. So I just kind of put some, some pink color in, and I'll just make a little bit of a darker side, just for a little contrast. So I'm going to come in here. See, I'm using the, the angle of the brush, OK, just pulling it across. Just want to get a little bit of darkness in there, just for some contrast. But I still don't want to cover up all of my gray underneath. But watch what happens once I put a little dark in. It kind of, your eye kind of looks to that side a little bit. And that's what I like. You want to keep the viewer's eye in the painting. All right, I'm going to wash out that brush now. I'm going to do the same thing with some beautiful phalo blue. Now, this is really rich, this color, so I have to be real careful with it. I'm putting quite a bit of water coming over to my next uh, bottle here. It looks like a bottle, not a vase. And I'm just going to put some in like this, OK? And like I said, I don't want to cover it all up. I'm going to wash my brush out a little and just pat it. And that, that way, I can go back and I can actually lighten this a little if I think it looks too dark, OK? There we go. And it's not done yet, because you can always go back and forth between these, and you can add color. It's hard to take the color off. You really can't. But it's pretty easy just to put more. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the side. I'm just going to put a little bit of extra dark here, just to draw the viewer's eye in to a side, to the side a little bit, all right? So see, I'm kind of anchoring my finger. And I want to pull that across so a little dark there. And I like the idea of going up and down, because that kind of gives that illusion of the bottle. Now, I want to wash that out. I hardly have any paint left in there. I want to just come and get a little bit of blue up here, just a tint. All right, I can even come take some off of here and pull it up. All right, just want to get some of that color in. The object of this is just to get some really pretty colors in there. Now. Over here, I have dioxazine purple, all right? Another beautiful, rich color. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm watering it down and going to come across. And I could see in my other one, I did come across and make it kind of look like there was some water in this, too. So just like this. My brush separated a little bit. That's OK. And I want to do, again, those crisscrosses. I want to get some nice purple up here. All right, you can see I'm kind of just blending a little, a little bit of purple. Again, I'll come in and do a really dark spot over here. This way, the viewer's eye, again, has some place to look inside. Another little dark spot over there and here. 
okay? So then what I did was after I got some of that color in, while I had this purple, I just came over and just for a little color harmony, I kind of came and I put a little bit of the other colors in each other, okay? Just a little. So you can see I just kind of used what was in the brush there. So you can blend that out a little bit, come in on the bottom. So that's it for the bottles. If I decide I want to add more, I still can. Right now we can just leave them, go on to the flowers. Now this is already dry up here. I see just a little bit of wet. That's fine. You can do this painting on the wet background or the dry background. So I'm just going to wash out this brush and I'm going to stick with this brush a little bit longer. All right, and let's see. I'm going to come in, I just want to put a few stems in. So I'm going to go back to that avocado color. I'm going to water it down a little, all right? And over here I have a couple of daisies. So notice how I'm anchoring my finger and I'm just going to pull the stem down. And then I think I'll put another one here. Now, so I can look at my other painting and then I can say, oh, you know what? I want to change that a little bit. And that's what I did. I changed the angle of those a little. So then I can come in here make it look like these are going right into this water. What I did here was I used a lighter touch than I did up on the top. So this is a little darker and then this is behind water. So all I did was lift my hand up and very, very lightly I pulled that down. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So maybe I want my flower over here. So I'll make this stem here, okay? And same thing, I'll just little, little, little light touch. Now I can see that has a little too much paint on it. So I'm just wiping it off a little on my paper towel and then light touch, I will come in this way. This way it looks like it comes right through the water. All right, the other thing I can do is I can try to fuzz it a little bit just so it looks like it's behind the glass. And that gets a little dangerous sometimes, but see, I could just do it real gentle and that will make it look like it's kind of behind the glass. All right, so last two, there we go. Again, in that nice light avocado, and I have two flowers there. Again, you can see I have five flowers all together, so I have uneven amount of the jars and vases and an uneven amount of flowers, all right? And I'll come, I wanna do them all at different height. So maybe I'll lower this one a little bit, and then maybe put this one coming this way. Again, now I will come through here, but I'm very, very light touch to get those down into the bottle, okay? The other thing I did was I kind of put some greenery in, all right? And we'll do that after the flowers. I'll see where we need it, because that's kind of like a filler. We can play around with that. If we think it looks too empty in one spot, we can just throw more greenery in there, all right? And I'm just gonna wash this brush out. So now we'll go and we'll do some little fun flowers, okay? There we go. So. I have these uh, daisies over here, which are kind of a yellow um, orange, but my background color looks like it is a little bit too uh, yellow, so um, orangey yellow. So I'm going to try to do a contrast and let's see how this works out, all right? Let's try a yellow. And I like the yellow on there, so I'm gonna go with it. I'm using a filbert brush now. This is a number 10 filbert. And all I'm doing is loading up both sides of the brush. I'm holding it out the end, pushing, turning, 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 and lifting it. And I made that look easy and it's not always so easy. All right, so that you wanna practice. Let me do it again in slow motion from another side. I'm pushing, 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 turning, lifting. And I, my daisy may be a little crooked now, but that's okay. I'm going to do it again. I'm, going to, I'm trying to hold, let me hold my brush all the way up here so then maybe we can get it in there, this, this little lesson of a daisy for you. And push, 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 turn. See, I have a lot of paint there, can go over. All right, so all I'm doing is pushing, lifting, and turning. But I am aiming it towards the middle, okay? There we go, see how I pushed and turned. I can squeeze another one in here and you can build your daisy that way, all right? Now, yeah, I see I can probably squeeze one in, but you know what? Rather than squeeze it, let me just make that one a little bigger. So you can kind of like improvise a little and, you know, after a while, after your painting, you will le learn to wing it a little bit. All right, let's go do that other one. Now, I don't have as much room, so let's make this one a little smaller. And again, always good to do a little bit of a contrast, smaller and larger. 
darker, lighter. That's what makes a nice painting when you have all that contrast, okay? So I'm pushing a little harder. And I do like this yellow, okay? This is the Hansa yellow. And I really like the way that looks as compared to my other one. So that's what I like about having an example painting, all right? It's fun to do like this because then you can look at your other one and say, you know what, I don't like that, I'm gonna change it. And it gives you that opportunity to change it. Now, I'm using the same brush, the Filbert, and I'm going to do this, these petals on uh, this flower. So the same way I did the daisy, only this time I'm going to go towards just what would be the bottom here. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this so the camera can see that. This bottom, notice how they're all aimed this way. All right, so I'm just gonna aim that way. And you can see I'm using a brighter color. I like the bright color. I like the idea of having the um, more watercolor effect, but I'm using just, it's still a watercolor effect, but I'm just using a little bit of the darker pigment now. I'm not adding quite as much water. Okay, and I'll go back and I will put in the middle in a bit. All right, so I really like those bright colors. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to do just a fun um, five petal flower, okay, which I've done on many shows before. This one I'm just gonna do a little bit different. This is really, really for beginners. And like I said, if you wanna do a nice little watercolor effect, this is fun. All right, so I'm again using the filbert and all I'm doing is wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. That's one petal. Here's another petal, okay? Another, you can see all I'm doing is wiggling and going in a circle. Wiggling again, wiggling again. Now you can make this as dark as, or as light as you want or as big as small as you want. There we go, all right? Just a fun little flower and I can, I can come in and I can actually say, okay, I wanna just even that out a little. I like the idea of having it be all kinda jagged kind of, I guess you can say. <laughs> All righty, so let's go do another one. Same way, I'll make this one a little smaller. All right, so that's say one petal, another petal, another petal. And I put a little bit of water, I may get a little drip there. We'll see. I wanna try to cover that stem a little bit and that's easy enough to do. Just have to put a couple layers on there. All right, so see how that's dripping? That's all right, here we go. You can just dab it around, dab it around. If you do put too much water and you see it starting to drip, all you have to do is take a paper towel real fast and just blot it, okay? Now, also look at that. When you blot it, you can make definition in there, okay? I should have thought about that before. All right, here we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back to my, um, my flowers, my first flower that I did. I want to put a little center in there. That could be done with a variety of brushes. Just so happens I have this one in my hand going into some raw sienna. And I can just dab a little bit. This, all I'm doing is dabbing, okay? Anybody can do this, just some dabbing. And that's it, plain and simple. This one, I made a little brown, so I'm just gonna wipe my brush out because I'm gonna go to the dark brown, okay? And same thing, I'm just going to dab it and just kind of make this in a little gumdrop on top, okay? There we go. Now, the center of the uh, blue flower is yellow. Now it's still wet, so there's a chance when I go put that yellow in there, I may get a little green. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna try it anyway. Now at home, of course, you could wait for it to dry and then do it. Here I go. And dabbing, I'm gonna try to dab over that stem a little bit, see? Now I am getting a little green, that's okay. After it dries, I can come in, put more yellow. I do see some of that yellow poking through, all right? And I like that. So, what I need to do now is let's get some, let's get some uh, leaves on there. Now, the leaves, there's so many different leaves to, that you can do for this. I'm just gonna do a quick, quick leaf. Again, I'm watering down the paint like watercolor. I'm using an angle brush. You can use a flat brush. That's fine too. Just adding some water. I don't wanna add too much water, I'll have some drips. So, what I can do is, well, just maybe do a little wiggle leaf. Okay, so just wiggling, wiggling. I'm just thinking about a leaf shape. 
That's all. Not trying to be real fancy, just the leaf shape, just the idea to get the shapes in there, okay? Like I said, this is an abstract painting. Nothing has to be exactly accurate. I'm gonna dip in a little more water. I wanted a little more water down. I have some nice daisies over here. I could just come up, do a leaf. You can see it's any way that it's going. Where you have room, you can squeeze it in, you can go over them. All right, and you could add as many leaves as you want over here. I see that I had one that was kind of hanging over here. All right, so see, just kind of filling in, putting a little stem there, put another one over here. All right, maybe another one over here. You can see I'm not trying to be real accurate. I want it to be abstract. I like the idea of having it just be, you know, kind of all over there. All right, maybe put one big one right here. Now. I think that it can use some of that other greenery that I had. So all I did was I came in like this and kind of threw some in like this, okay? Just to make it look like there's something, something else, you know, like a greenery. See, I'm just kind of doing it lightly. I want to just fuzz that out a little. So easy enough, okay? Now, you can keep adding and adding and adding to this, okay? I kind of like it as it is. You can add more color if you want, but you don't have to. You can leave it like this or you can spritz it. Now, I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna spritz it, okay? Now, what I did before, which you may not wanna do, is I held my um, spritzer too close. That's how come I have so much yellow in mine. Um, I over spritzed, all right? The other thing is um, I didn't realize that it wasn't dry before I varnished. I thought it was dry and it wasn't. So we kind of smeared it around. But if you like that look, that's how you should do it. You spritz as much as you want and then you can varnish before um, it's, it's even dry and it's going to kind of you know give this old fashioned look. So I'm just gonna shake up my little spritzer and I'm gonna stand further back than I did with this one. All right, and here we go. Now, one more spritz, that's it, okay? So I have to learn from my, you can see I sprayed it around a little. I have to learn from my, um, my, my past, okay, that you, you can over spritz. I see over here I need a little something though, and let's see, oh, almost did it again. Now, that's it, all right? So you can leave it like this, and I think it makes a pretty painting, all right? You don't necessarily have to go across to, um, you know, to make the um, yellow even or anything. You can just leave it like this. It looks abstract. I think it looks like an old fashioned vintage greeting card that you would pick up in, in like a Hallmark store. Okay, so um, I'm done for today. I hope you enjoyed this simple painting that anybody can do and um, come find me on Facebook and don't forget to look for deco art products um, at your local stores and Michaels and Hobby Lobby and AC Moore and even pouring products over at Home Depot. So thanks for tuning in and come see my other shows.